should God, should our Father stop being referred to as He? The Church of England is considering whether to break with tradition and use gender-neutral terms for the Almighty instead. Yes, and this comes as the Church debates today whether or not to allow its clergy to bless same-sex marriages. Well, joining us now in the studio, Anglican priest Charlie Bell and uh, Graham Nichols, who is an evangelical pastor, joins us from Haywards Heath. Very good morning to both of you. Good morning. Um, is our father actually a woman? <laughs> what an interesting question. I mean, I think for, for, for millennia, we've tried to find and um, words to speak about God. Mm. Um, and in a sense, that's, that's always been part of, of the Christian challenge. It's the part of the challenge of any religion. Um, I think we need to... I think the, the arguments over whether um, changing our father to be more gender neutral um, can, can very easily end up to be sort of, um, uh, you know, curtain-twitching uh, moral panic. Uh, in a sense, we're just <laughs> talking about trying to find ways of talking about God as we begin to develop our language, as we understand more and more about human beings in the, in the, in the modern world. Mm. So is, is God our father? Will Jesus calls God our father? Um, is God a man? Absolutely not. And the entire history of Christian theology and indeed Jewish theology before mm. it would support that position. Graham Nichols, um, we had a comment just now from one of our viewers. He says, what next? Rewriting the Bible. But isn't the Bible a text which has been rewritten in very many editions over centuries? And isn't it always a challenge for every society to kind of put religion and God in um, the context of today? And in the context of today, isn't it kind of a fair question? Is God a man, a woman, or is God a greater power? Yeah, it's a great question because um, I don't think the Bible has been rewritten. I think the Bible is as uh, originally written down. That's what we've got. That's the great there's, thing there's about it. There's a St. James's Bible. version, the authorised version, the Good News sure. Bible. The prayer book yeah. has been reconsidered yeah. by the church many, many times over the, uh, the centuries. It, it's all been rewritten. Yeah, yeah but the, the prayer book is not the same as the Bible. And the Bible the is... The Bible's been rewritten lots of times. We have not rewritten lots of times. There's lots of translations, but of the original scriptures written in Greek and Hebrew and... I'm a little bit of Aramaic. So uh, that's lots not of the point evangelical about churches use the Good News Bible. There's not lots of that's just a different translation, but I, I think that's well, quite that's off not. The point. We're just talking translations. We're not talking about revisions or changing. Uh, of course, you have to understand what the original words in the Greek or Hebrew meant. Um, but um, I mean, I'm not a curtain, curtain twitcher. I think it's a, it's a good debate about uh, uh, how best to refer to God. But I think how best to refer to God is how he's referred to in the Bible. And uh, although some mother attributes are spoken about, it's, he's referred to as a father and uh, in male terms. And that's how a lot of the, the, the language of the Bible works. So I think it's more about trying to uh, accommodate to culture in an unhelpful way um, and, and not a good way. Let me put something to you, um, Graham Nichols. Becky said, I'm a committed Christian and have spoken to quite a few people over the years who've struggled in relating to God as father as they have not had good role models or relationships with their own fathers. So changing God's gender could be beneficial to some people. That's an interesting point, isn't it? If you, if you have a poor relationship with a father figure, perhaps that God could be a different figure in your life, not necessarily a father. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a great point, but I think you could turn that on its head and say uh, whether you've had a good father or a bad father relationship, God is the ultimate father. God is the good father you never had. Jesus is the elder brother you never had. Um, so I don't think you need to change it for that reason. Um, I think you just need to work around it and, and turn it around and use it for good. Charlie, it, <laughs> it sort of brings to mind this this everyone's thinking about God as a, as a man or a woman. Mm. What do you think about when you think about God? Because it rather suggests that God was once a person, mm. which God was not. Well, I mean, the Christian tradition would suggest that Jesus Christ was both fully God and fully man. So we can see the, the incarnation of God in Jesus Christ. But if we're talking about... Well, if God, that's the case, uh, yeah. then God is a man. Well, no, because Jesus is, is, is one of the three persons of the Trinity. So if we're thinking about the Bible, we're thinking about what the Bible says about God. Let's go back to Genesis. 
in Genesis, uh, we, we've heard much in the, in the same-sex marriage debate about um, male and female, he created them. What we're not hearing enough about is male and female, he created them in the image of God, he created them. So the he idea... isn't either a man or a woman. Precisely. He is both And a the Bible's man quite clear woman. about this, and I don't understand why we find it so difficult to recognise the clarity where there is clarity in the Bible, and then we look for clarity where there isn't. Graham Nichols, in God's own image is both the image of a man and in the image of a woman. Absolutely. Uh, I don't disagree with Charlie on, on the point uh, that God the Father is neither male nor female. Uh, totally agree with that. Uh, I just want to use the terms that the Bible has used in referring to him, um, not to make him gendered in the full sense that we would use it, but in terms of his role. Uh, so I think that's good. And I think those uh, male-female distinctions are important when it comes to thinking about gender and about sexuality. Graham Nichols, um, it wasn't too many decades ago here in the UK that it was, a, um, that it was illegal to, um, to be openly in public homosexual. Um, do you think homosexuality is still wrong? A sin. I think that that's what the Bible teaches and that's what I teach and that's what I believe. So, yes, I do. Uh, it's a different question as to whether it should be illegal because I think it's a, it's a matter of conscience. I'm not sure it should necessarily be a matter of law. Uh, but I think that the Bible does teach and uh, has uh, Christians have always taught um, that uh, not so much that specifically homosexual sin is a sin, but that all in, all sin, oh, sorry, all sex outside of marriage is immorality, uh, and that has been the the, the teaching of, of Christians from the beginning. Yes, and but, indeed, but 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 that relies upon marriage being defined as only something which can happen between a man and a woman. Whereas if you were to allow, in a society where homosexuality is no longer illegal. Um, if you would allow marriage to um, be between consenting adults, man and woman, or man and man, that would solve your problem, because once the church blessed the marriage, on your argument, um, the homosexuality would no longer be a sin. Yeah, except I'm defining marriage as, uh, as a lifelong covenant between a man and a woman. Why? Uh, that's what I believe marriage should be, and that's what I believe, uh, that's what I believe the Bible taught, and that teaches, and that's what my source of authority is. Of course, if I want to make up my own religion and accommodate the culture, then, then I can define it how I want. But that's how the Bible defined marriage. As that was a bit confusing, though, because you said a moment ago that homosexuality was a sin because it wasn't um, blessed in marriage. And then you say, but by definition, homosexuality can't be blessed in marriage because it's not a man and a woman. Therefore, by definition, it has to be a sin. Sure. Uh, yeah, and I, I'm not saying that it's not a sin. I'm saying that uh, all sex outside of... Christian marriage, which is marriage between a man and a woman, is wrong. And uh, you could use the word sin, yes. Uh, Charlie Bell, you're uh, an Anglican priest. Yeah. Do you want uh, to bless marriages? Do you want bishops to do that within the church? Yes. I mean, in the Anglican church already, so we have a variety of different forms of Anglicanism within the United Kingdom. So the Church of England is, is, is an Anglican church, but also we have the, um, a, a church in Scotland, the Episcopal Church, and the Church in Wales, both of which are um, Anglican churches as well. And in those churches, certainly in Scotland, you can be married in an Anglican cathedral uh, by an Anglican bishop to someone of the same sex. At the moment, uh, the Church of England does not recognise that. And if one of our clergy does that and goes to Scotland and get married, married in an Anglican church, in an Anglican cathedral by an Anglican bishop, they will lose their licence. That, for me, is an absurd position for us mm -hmm. to find ourselves in. The Church of England needs to make a change on this, and I think this is the first step today of doing that. Um, the Archbishop of Canterbury is thought to believe that there were too many fractures within the worldwide um, community to be able to go further mm. on same-sex marriage. Has he got a point? Well, I think all we're doing now is being honest about the divisions that have already been there. Mm. I don't think there's any new divisions necessarily. I really struggle to believe that God would want us to build uh, some form of uh, sort of unity on the backs of, of LGBT people in this country. That f seems to me to be a very strange way to hold unity together. But, it, but, it's, but, but, it's, but it's, in the end, evolutionary, isn't it? Because if you go back 50 years ago, the Church of England was united mm. in not allowing homosexual blessings or, um, or gay marriage. Yes. And as that changes, you, we can't expect the whole world to change at the same pace no. as us. But in the end, religion, to work, has to be able to, to embrace 
change. Exactly. And I think we have to be honest about the role of culture and context in so much of this. In a sense, we hear a lot about, well, the Bible's very, very clear on this. We know that that's not the case. That argument has been many times... You say that you you're know. reading the Bible is that same-sex couples should be married in church. Yes, I absolutely do believe that to be the case. I think the, the Bible is a narrative of, of redemption, of creation and of relationship between God and God's people and between, and between God's people. I think we can either turn to the Bible and say, what does the Bible have to say to same sex uh, people in same-sex relationships? Well, either it has... The only thing it has to say is, you must remain celibate and God has nothing for your relationship. And you know or the Archbishop of Canterbury... Else. Well, you know the Archbishop of Canterbury well as a Church of England mm. uh, uh, priest. Do you think he, in his heart, is looking forward to the day in which he can not only bless marry a gay couple? Well, he seems to be, from what he's been saying. It's all been... Of course, as you say, he's been trying to manage this in a sense of unity. But it feels to me that actually Archbishop Justin probably does want to do all of this. And I rejoice the fact that we have an Archbishop who, who despite all the challenges that he faces, I think in his heart wants to do this. And finally, Graham Nichols, um, apparently MPs are considering bringing the Church of England into line with the law of the land, equalities law on this. Chris Bryant, who is a Labour MP, chair of the Standards of Privileges Committee, a former Anglican priest, said the church's position currently is causing very real pain and if the church won't act, Parliament should give it a push. Can you imagine that happening and what would be the effect? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really understand the politics of uh, the Church of England and, and all its connections, but I think in terms of justice, it seems very unfair that when gay marriage was brought in by the Cameron government, there was a, a very uh, specific promise that uh, churches in general, and the Church of England in particular, would be able to opt out of that. And uh, talking about disestablishment or some kind of compulsion or, or very heavy push from Parliament to, to change that, uh, you know, less than a decade afterwards seems grossly unfair. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that would not be right. But, you know, but in the end, uh, uh, I don't mind what the Parliament does or, or in a sense what the Church of England hierarchy does. We as, as Christians and Christian leaders have to do what our conscience says and how we read the Bible. We want to love people. We want to include people. But we don't think marrying same-sex couples is right. All right. Well, Graham Nichols, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. I mean... Does it, does it hurt you, Charlie Bell? Does it hurt your, the people you know and love? I mean, you know, I want to marry my partner in church. That's certainly the case. And your partner uh, is? My partner, Peter. Um, right. And uh, we've been together for a fair amount of time. Um, we got engaged last week. We're very keen to, to get married. So it does hurt me in a sense that, that, on a personal level, that we can't do that. But what breaks my heart more is seeing faithful, decent, loving Christian couples who happen to be uh, in relationships with someone of the same sex come to me in church and, be, and I'm unable to offer them anything at the moment. Today's vote in Synod might allow me to at least bless them. But I long for that day when we can say to them, you you know, all that we see that is so good about who you are and your relationship and your love and your family and the, all that you're doing for the community and the church, all of that is blessed by God. And I just long to be able to do that. Thank you Gosh. very much indeed. Love is love, no? All the big issues. My, my um, uncle came out as um, gay in his early 60s. He died uh, 20 years ago. And at the time, it was a big surprise for our family. And it's a tragedy that... At the time, he couldn't even be in a civil partnership and no. we would all have loved it if he could have been married in church. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it is considered one of the enduring legacies of David Cameron's government that, uh, that he brought that in, same-sex marriage. With cross-party support, because he couldn't have done it just with his majority. <laughs> I had to make it political. No, I'm making no, it. It was actually... It was, it was, it was, it was consensual it was and cross-party. Yes. That's how change yes. sometimes happens. Yes, yes, A not yes. political point. Yes. Love across the political divide. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's have a look at the weather now. Here's Laura.